a good time. Thank you, Dr. Lambert, for your brilliant introduction. We all are aware of what is involved when it comes to the pandemic, the coronavirus, COVID-19, as they call it. And uh, who else can talk more or better about the situations we are now experimenting with and the opportunities that uh, stem out of that pandemic? What can we do? Uh, pretty much like Dr. Lambert just pointed it out. What are the opportunities out there? This is the topic of our conference. Well, well, opportunities well, during the well, pandemic. Well, well. The problem is around, it is there. And no one at this point, whether who, the World Health Organization, or CDC in the United States, for example, the Center for Disease Control or any organization around the world, wherever you are, your students. Nobody knows exactly whether we are indeed at the end of the tunnel, whether this is about to finish. That's not the point we're going to discuss during this conference. The topic again, individual opportunities during the pandemic. The actuality that surrounds everybody at this time. So Dr. Lambert and I are not gonna be doing the talking. We are super happy that our students are the ones who are gonna make us aware of what the opportunities are out there. And uh, we are going to start exactly at this time with uh, Unova Amida. Unova is doing, uh, I mean, she's from uh, Tajikistan. Mm -hmm. Opportunities to live better. Very, very first topic for our conference. I don't know, Dr. Lambert, whether you want to add anything else before we turn the floor to uh, Uunova Hamida for the first conference of this symposium. Again, welcome to everybody and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Dr. Franklin Valsin. And do Dr. Valsin will be with us today introducing the, uh, the presenters and, and uh, offering his wisdom. Dr. Valsin has a very full life with many experiences, wow. a lot of wisdom. So we are very thankful to have Dr. Franklin Valsin, who is the president of uh, AIU. How are you so, I want to just say that if you have any questions, write them in chat. I know I see some people with their hands raised, but mm -hmm. if you have questions, write them in chat, and then we can take those questions and ask the presenters or I'll be answering the questions in chat so that we'll leave the microphone open for the presenter. Okay, I think we're getting ready to start here. I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Franklin Valsin to introduce our first presenter. And again, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lambert, to be part of this event. I certainly will be with you, uh, the students of the AIO uh, family the entire day for this symposium. And the first presenter we have on our list is Urunova Hamilda yes. uh, from Tajikistan. Opportunities to live better. Thank you very much for joining us again, everybody. And thank you to you, Hamilda Urunova. I have the honor and pleasure to introduce you, Hamilda, for the first conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shall I start? Yes. yes. Okay. Go thank ahead you and share your presentation and go ahead and start. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, dear Dr. Edward Lambert and dear Dr. Franklin. Valsin. Valsin. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm very happy to be one small part of AIU. Uh, and I'm very happy that my presentation was accepted by AIU Commission. And today I have an opportunity to make my presentation before so many great people. 
it's very uh, good chance to share my experience and to share my feelings. So first of all, I want to say that uh, I'm not going to make any discovery. I'm not going to uh, make a, an extraordinary presentation. Simply uh, with my presentation, I want to share my experience, to share my uh, feelings and uh, to share my feelings um, during the pandemic. Uh, so I want to say at the beginning of my presentation that uh, just pandemic, um, in spite of all uh, the problems which we had, made me to find out my mistakes and to correct my mistakes. Because I think that it's very, very important thing to realize your mistake, to know what is the goal of your life, and to make your orientation. So if you let me, I will start. Um, okay, I cannot show my presentation. I, th I think you should give me permission to, to show my presentation, okay? There is no permission to show my presentation. Do you have, uh, the, yes. do you have okay. the permission now? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, I thought I had given you the permission. Okay. Uh -huh. So. Okay. Can you see my presentation now? Yes, I can see the presentation. Okay. So. <clears throat> so, uh, as the topic of our symposium is individual opportunities during the pandemic, uh, of course, it is. Uh, it is not devoted to the coronavirus or it is not devoted to the pandemic itself. It is devoted, first of all, to the individual opportunities, to that individual chance which we had during the pandemic. So uh, usually during my presentation, I, uh, I got used to speak about first about the keywords which we have in uh, which I have in my presentation. The key word in my presentation is opportunity. So first of all, I want to speak about opportunity. What is opportunity and what it gives people? Uh, to, support my, um, to support my ideas, I want to, uh, I want to bring uh, the confirmation of uh, the Greek philosopher Aristotle, who mentioned in his book, in his philosophical book, uh, Metaphysics, about four reasons of existence of everything in the world. I liked it very much, and I want to show you two last of them. In his philosophical uh, teaching, Aristotle said that uh, begin everything which exists in the world is beginning of movement and goodness. So it means everything in the world contains, which exists in the world contains beginning of movement. So everything may cause something to move. Everything may cause something to start, something, something to be born. And everything in the world, no matter it is happiness, unhappiness, misfortune or fortune, goodness or Evil, everything contains goodness. It depends on uh, how you uh, look at the problem uh, from the point of view, from the optimistic point of view or pessimistic point of view. So also, also uh, Aristotle uh, mentioned in his book, Metaphysics, that opportunity is the beginning of movement. So I like this confirmation very much and that's why I want to share it with you. Okay. In my opinion, opportunity gives chance us something to happen or to appear. So it means uh, due to opportunity, we or something happens in the world, something appears in the world, or something new is born in the world, which may cause development or some progress or etc. Also, opportunity is a starting point of every movement. So movement starts due to opportunity. And uh, if to be optimistic person, 
movement has a progressive character. Maybe someone may not agree with my opinion. May maybe someone may say that movement cannot have always a progressive character. But I want to say that as I am an optimistic person and I always look at life circumstances, at life events from the uh, uh, optimistic point of view, that is why for me movement has a progressive character. So uh, I want to share with you, uh, with my experience, with my feelings uh, before the pandemic, about, uh, with my uh, life condition, which I had before the pandemic. So I felt alienation from the family, from my children, because I was too busy due to my job. I had a lot of meetings, conferences, for the sake of making career, okay. My my first, my basic goal was uh, making career and uh, be a successful social wife, as a social woman in the society, and uh, that is why, consequently, huge time I spent huge time and energy uh, for uh, organizing conferences, for organizing meetings. But unfortunately, I spent little time and little energy for my children and for my family. Consequently, my family and children were lack of attention, lack of mother's attention, lack of wife's attention. So, of course, everybody knows, it is not uh, news for everyone that uh, pandemic had a lot of horrors. Uh, for example, it has brought the humanity great loss. We uh, lost a lot of uh, people. Uh, uh, we had sorrow fortune, death of close people, everything. Uh, there was boom in shops and markets. Uh, people were in panic, anxiety, fear. Um, we didn't uh, know what will be tomorrow or next week or next month. Uh, generally, we, we were hopeless. And uh, besides, we lost our job, lack of money, and etc. But in spite of all these horrors, pandemic had a lot of presents. Here you can see for me, in my opinion, um, pandemic made people, of course, not all the people, but a definite group of people to change their life orientation. Especially me, especially me, I changed my life orientation. It means uh, if before the pandemic, I highly evaluated material values, I highly evaluated uh, career, making career, making business. But after the pandemic, I reoriented. Uh, material values are devaluated before me and spiritual values as love, happiness, health, friendship, mercifulness, and uh, etc. are estimated highly. So uh, what else? And what opportunities did pandemic give me individually? especially to me, it gave me an opportunity to love my family more and spend more time with my children, not at work. And uh, it gave me an opportunity to feel and understand my real obligations as a woman and a mother, uh, because every person in this world is born for a special or a specific mission. For example, man is born for protecting his family, for providing his family, for earning money, etc. And women is born, first of all, his basic obligation is to take care of his children and to take care of his household. And this, uh, this was my mistake that I forgot that I did not pay enough attention to my real and basic obligations. And uh, just pandemic made me to move. Pandemic was the beginning of my movement. It was short presentation. Uh, <laughs> I want to repeat that it is not an extraordinary presentation. It is not a, a dis, a special discovery, but uh, there is a small discovery that uh, I could correct my mistake uh, and I could uh, reorient and uh, make uh, my orientation and my focus on my family and my children, first of all, and then to speak uh, to to pay attention to other problems. Thank you very much for your for your attention.
And if you have any question or any comment, please, I'm, I'm ready to listen to you. Thank you very much, uh, Hamida. Uh, even though, as you said, your presentation was fairly short, but I personally enjoyed it to the fullest extent. Uh, so that, uh, uh, there is a point that you made about the creation of movement. I yes. love that topic. It uh, went suddenly straight into my heart uh, yes. because this is something I believe is shared by virtually everybody. Uh, the concept of life in general has drastically changed from the pre-pandemic era to the current uh, times. Uh, people think differently. People look at things differently. And there is a point you also made, which I loved, the idea that uh, what they call materialistic or just material values have gone down, almost uh, disappeared. Uh, people usually would uh, value money over anything else uh, from a spiritual standpoint. And pretty much like you said, the spiritual dimension has gained some significant momentum. I love that idea. However, uh, while I do understand your personal approach, the way you have fully benefited from the pandemic, uh, we're looking at this again from a very spiritual uh, standpoint, uh, you could uh, spend more time with your children, with your family, and so forth and so on. But my first question to you, uh, waiting eventually for other questions that might come from other attendees. My first question to you, uh, Amida, is have you assessed the extent that other people have recognized that uh, upgrading, so to speak, of uh, spiritual values, much like you yourself, have experimented it? So uh, how is it around you from other people in your country, in your community? Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much for your question. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to say that it is my individual experience. Mm -hmm. It is my individual experience and individual feelings which I had during the pandemic and after pandemic. As for the other people, if I'm not, if I understood your question correctly, mm -hmm. uh, as for the other people, I can say that, yes, there are a lot of... Come from my back credit from Croatia. How could I say? Uh, just one second, please, Hamida. Uh, again, I would like to ask every other attendee, of course, we fully appreciate your attendance. Uh, we love that you have decided to join us for this very important symposium about uh, individual opportunities during the pandemic. Again, thank you very much. But it is critical, it's very, very important that everybody else yeah, turn your microphone no, no, off, no, no, no. please. If you do not turn your microphone no, no, no. off, we will have a no, no, no. To, to hear different uh, presenter. So uh, let me repeat that. I, there is a lot of echo right now. Is somebody else talking very loud. And also be aware, be mindful of your surroundings, other people who can be around making noise. So it is, again, very, very important that you turn your microphone off. Thank you very much. And I uh, anticipate everybody is going to be cooperating with this request. Turn your microphone off unless you are speaking, whenever the time comes for you to uh, uh, speak to the group, and you will turn the microphone on back on on your end. But right now, we would like to have only Hamilda uh, with a microphone that is on. I'm so sorry for my interruption. Again, Hamida, please, you may continue at this time. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Uh, I really felt discomfort during my speech because there was uh, uh, noise uh, during my uh, presentation. So mm -hmm. I want to continue and uh, I can say that as 
the topic of our presentation, uh, our symposium is individual opportunities. I mostly wanted to show my individual experience. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show my individual, uh, uh, share my individual feelings and experience. As for the other people who surround me in our country, for example, I can say, but I'm not sure. Uh, I can say that, yes, a lot of people um, change their orientation but uh, I don't know to what extent the, their orientation, their intention is sustainable. Mm -hmm. There are some people, yeah, there are some people who can change their orientation only at that time when they feel difficulties. Yes. When difficulty finishes, they can go back to their previous, uh, previous life and they can uh, continue their previous life. This is very important, I think. Uh, and uh, it was uh, something like examination from the God, and uh, God is examining us uh, while uh, during uh, difficulties, during uh, easy moments of our life, when we have money, when we have not money, in different kinds of situations. And it depends on our power of will, power of intention, and how much we can Mm, how much we can change ourselves and pandemic was a very good opportunity especially for me as for the other people i cannot say uh, confidently mr dr franklin yes yes uh, <laughs> of course this would uh, require that you be in touch with other people and question them doing some kind of survey to uh, assess the extent that they also believe that the pandemic has had that kind of effect on their lives. Uh, but there is another word you just used. Every term that you use, uh, again, is having a very, very positive impact, not only on me as an attendee, someone who uh, is listening to you, but also the uh, the extent that your presentation is indeed going very very deep into uh, what people suddenly feel during this pandemic time the term that i just alluded to is sustainable sustainable this is a term that we use all the time especially when uh, we remember every goal you set up for your life or for whatever you're trying to do for any endeavor uh, must be sustainable because if you reach that goal and you enjoy the outcome for a certain time, but thereafter there is a change that uh, would imply that you haven't really uh, benefited uh, solely from, uh, from the goal, then it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, wasted time. So let me return that question to you, Hamida. Uh, the movement that has been created within you, how sustainable you assume or you believe that's going to be. Let's look at the scale of zero. But you can how sustainable is your movement going to be? Uh, if I understood your question correctly, yes. how how much movement in my inside world is sustainable and how I'm going to continue my movement? Am I yes. right? I'm trying to see uh, how you can anticipate what's going to happen. Let's just look at uh, how sustainable your uh -huh. current movement is because you are enjoying it since, uh, as I said again, you've gone on the side of uh, on the spectrum of your spiritual values which compel you to be with your family, with your children, and so forth and so on. But certainly I understand that this has to be as a result of the pandemic mm -hmm. uh, pushing everybody indoor, pushing everybody inside their homes. Uh, uh, let's assume, for example, the pandemic is now over how can we, how can you look at the sustainability of your movement? How are you going to uh, keep that movement the way it is right now? Or is something going to change? 
-hmm. how sustainable you think uh, your position now is okay okay thank you very much for your question uh, i liked your question and i like the word sustainability as you said uh, this is very important thing in our life a uh, person should not be changeable in his character in his yes. uh, in his I, I, I want to say in his point of view, but from, from one hand, it is good to change yourself. It is good to, to improve your individuality, to improve your knowledge, but it does not mean that, it does not mean uh, to ch all, always to be in change. A person should be, should choose one definite direction in, in his life. So, uh, of course, pandemic, pandemic finished, but this movement in my heart did not finish and I want to develop this movement, how I want to develop my movement. So, uh, first of all, this movement uh, I can describe as uh, paying more attention to my family, first of all. Okay. It is not only words, it is not only uh, feelings, it is, it is just actions. If you act, uh, then it will be uh, a real realization of your intention. I am paying more attention to my family. I'm taking care more uh, about my family. And uh, I'm less uh, concerned about my job. Okay. Before, <laughs> yes, before I was very much concerned about the problems which which happen, which arise in my office, in my, in my job, I took them uh, to my heart. Yes, I paid a great attention. And now I understand that all the problems which we have in our life, they are, we don't have great value. The greatest value in our life is our family, is our children. Yes. Yes. Only your family, only your children can support you in difficult situation. It's true. Nobody in the job, nobody in your, at your work, I mean, I mean, uh, outside in the society uh, can support, uh, uh, support you as much as well as your family. That is why I changed my orientation and I will try to be sustainable in my movement. It depends on my power of will, power of knowledge, and uh, power of, um, uh, what else, my will and knowledge, of course. And uh, I'm sure that I will not change my movement. It will be, I will strengthen my movement in future. Uh, this is very intriguing, very interesting. Uh, the last statement that you made, Hamida, is uh, you are sure you're not going to change your movement. But one thing that I recall very clearly is uh, everything so far stemmed out of uh, your understanding of Aristotle, a book on metaphysics. So uh, at some point in your last statement, your response, which you elaborated on very, very uh, significantly, you did say that it all depends on the power of your will, the mm -hmm. power of your will, which correlates, which connects very well with uh, the uh, metaphysics dimension of Aristotle's book. Yes. When it comes to metaphysics, you know, we human beings, no matter how much knowledge we have, no matter how scientific we believe our statements and actions are, when it comes to metaphysics, there is a great deal of uncertainty, which means we, we don't know really, you know, how things are going to play out, what's going to happen next, and so forth and so on. Pretty much like you yourself just said, it depends on the power of your will which means that you want the, your movement, which you have created to be sustainable, which means now, tomorrow, next year, 10 years from now, it's gonna be the same movement. But of course, everything remains contingent upon the power of your will, which is, uh, you and I understand, 
completely beyond your control, the power of your will. You know how the will is right now. You might even anticipate how it is going to be tomorrow, but next month, next year, five years from now, you don't know. So <laughs> what's your response to that? Uh, for example, let me try. I'm so sorry to uh, uh, talk so much about this. I'm doing so because we have plenty of time. You know, you were uh, uh, you had about uh, uh, 50 minutes, uh, one hour to do your presentation. But so far, we have plenty of time left for you. So please allow me to uh, be a little more descriptive in my uh, responses, in my comments, and so forth and so on. So. Uh, uh, what do you think? How sustainable do you believe the power of your will can be? You're happy right now you are with your family, but again, the pandemic is not going to continue forever. Uh, two months from now, let's uh, imagine the pandemic is completely out and the entire workforce is going back to work. We're talking about... Uh, your paychecks, we're talking about uh, more opportunities, of course, uh, after the pandemic, even though our topic now is uh, opportunities during the pandemic. But since we're talking about the sustainability of the power of your will, what do you yeah. think is going to happen, Amida, one year from now with your current power of will, your current movement, what do you think is gonna happen? Okay, thank you very much for your question. Uh, so the power of will, if I, if I correctly understand your question, mm -hmm. uh, my sustainability of my movement depends on my power of will. But there is a question, how can I control my power of will? Mm -hmm. And uh, to what extent I'm sure that my power of will will be enough for me to continue my movement. Am I right? Uh, did, did yes, I you are correct, Amina. Correctly? Okay, you are. okay. So I want to say that uh, person, everybody has power of will because, because uh, God created person uh, and uh, gave him will. Uh, but it depends on person how much he or she uses his will in his in the realization of his goal, uh, and also a person man has got intellect and wishes. Mm. These uh, so a person's soul div is divided into two parts: uh, rational part and irrational part mm -hmm. so rational part means mm -hmm. intellect everybody everyone possesses intellect and irrational part of person's soul is his wishes so i want to say that if person uh, controls his wishes and if person's intellect is higher than his wishes he can strengthen his power of will he can go on his movement but if person's wishes uh, are higher than his intellect unfortunately he cannot control his power of will and he cannot uh, continue his movement he will be given temptations our life has a lot of temptations uh, especially uh, today in the century we have a lot of temptations and a weak person a person who has a weak power of will he will be uh, touched by temptations and the very important thing is to put your intellect higher than your wishes you everybody should uh, everybody should uh, make his intellect or everybody has uh, every person should make his wishes to obey his intellect and only then your power of will power of will will be sustainable and you will continue your movement i think you satisf you are satisfied by my answer 
Wow, that is impressive, uh, Amida. <laughs> you know, I'm very, very proud of you. Your presentation you. really was good and your responses are also adequate. Uh, this shows that uh, you fully possess complete history of the topic that you are talking about. Again, I feel a sense of pride of having someone like you in the family of Atlantic International University, because this is our goal, that our students be competitive uh, nationwide. I mean, worldwide, not nationwide, worldwide. Uh -huh. so that, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have any problem to uh, just uh, present you anywhere and say that he's a student of Atlantic International University. Very, very, very good presentation. Uh, we do have some time uh, for your performance, for your spot, Hamida. And I would like now to uh, turn the floor to uh, other students, other attendees who want to ask questions to Hamida about uh, uh, her topic during this uh, symposium. Want to ask a question? The first step is to uh, raise your hand. Raise your hand, and our department of uh, technology will see your hand up, and then they will allow you or I mean, eventually share the question. Somehow, I don't know, uh, Dr. Lambert, if you are following us. Uh, far, I don't see. I don't see. The screen of the students. I only have uh, uh, Hamida and myself, and then Hamida's presentation. That's what I have on the screen. I don't know, Hamida, if I may ask you to uh, uh, remove your presentation so that I can eventually see uh, other attendees and uh, see anybody who has hands up. And. Uh, we're almost there. So far, I can see your desktop. Uh, your computer is still on. I mean, your prison. OK, wow, Hamida. Hamida, you've yes. done uh -huh. a truly outstanding job. Hamida did it very, very well. A plus, Hamida. Now, don't go, Amida, don't go yet, because okay. uh, other attendees may have uh, important questions um, for you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is now your turn if you want to raise an issue about uh, Hamida presentation. Anybody? We have a, we have a question from that? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you, Amida, for uh, a good, good evening. I am Haruna Traore from Mali, Bamako. Okay. Amida, le, excuse me if I not pronounce uh, pronounce well, not well your your name. Uh, just I want to thank Aminda for this presentation. He is very wonderful. Uh, I I want to say that in this situation generally, the people who are, the people show only when face of the pandemic, of the pandemic. Now, in the, the presentation of Amanda, I noticed that she, he, she has shown two faces, the movement and the goodness. This is very important. Yes. This is very, very important. Because in this situation, generally the people is in the uh, uh, panic situation. But if Amina show that we have to be oh. in the goodness situation, this is a very, a very, very, very uh, uh, thing. Now, my question is, uh, according to Amina, which category of person, of people, social classes or social classes, uh, take advantage of these opportunities? of its opportunities, which people, which uh, status, uh, social classes take advantage of these opportunities, uh, uh, goodness opportunities. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you very much for your question. Um, if I correctly understood your question, you want to uh, know what category of people uh, could change their orientation, am I right? 
and uh, how much they could uh, change their life and uh, start their movement. Did I understand your question correctly? Yes, exactly. I, I want to know just uh, what category of people take advantage of the, the, the one face? Because in your representation, you have so two face, the movement of the, the, at the beginning of the pandemic and the goodness. Some people have a, a, a unique point of view of the pandemic. This is a panic situation. But in your development, you have so that we have we can see an overview of the pandemic. This is a good nest, according to my understanding. Now yes. I want to know uh, which people take advantage in the goodness situation of the pandemic. Okay, thank you very much. I understood your question. So uh, pandemic gave opportunity, pandemic gave goodness not to everyone. It depends on that, what kind of point of view, what kind of outlook you have got. If you have an, a pessimistic point of view, if you have a pessimistic outlook of uh, um, uh, world view, you can, uh, you can assess pandemic as horror, as a terrible thing. But that category of people who possess optimistic point of view, optimistic world outlook can assess, can evaluate pandemic uh, yes. and its goodness. And also uh, those people who possess religious point of view, who believe the God, and who believe that God every time examines people, every time uh, uh, sends examination and sends uh, experience, different kinds of experiences, that, kind of, that category of people can, uh, could change their orientation. But unfortunately, no, not everyone can possess such outlook and such uh, optimistic point of view. Are you satisfied by my answer? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm very glad uh, Hamida, you responded again very accurately and I'm pretty sure looking at uh, Charles Ray's face, he is certainly happy with the way you handled uh, his uh, question. Again, the floor is uh, open to every other attendee. I want to uh, take this opportunity to, uh, again, uh, thank everybody uh, for yeah. your decision to join us. Everybody has a way to uh, suddenly learn uh, from this uh, symposium. Hello. And uh, let's say, who else is there? Good afternoon. There we go. Go My ahead. My name is Oye Emmanuel. OK. Yes. I'm calling Can I ask my you. question now? Yes, go ahead. Oh, good afternoon. I want to say thank you to Amida for that wonderful presentation. I think it's an op another opportunity to learn uh, from her how you can make best use of this pandemic situation. I say thank you once again. My question goes thus. You have exposed us to self-realization and the optimism which we should, that we can put up at a time like this. Well, I have um, a bit of reservations, especially to my sisters and brothers from the African continent. While you try to be optimistic about everything around you, I cannot hear his question. I'm sorry. Yeah, it looks like uh, Emmanuel was uh, cut off at some point in time or lost the uh, connection. Uh, as we're waiting for Emmanuel to be back. Hello. Yes. Hello. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm so Go sorry. ahead, Emmanuel. I think I muted my speaker at, the, at one ah. point. So <laughs> I, I was trying to say this. Thank you once again, Amida. I was trying to say you exposed us to the fact that we should be optimistic and uh, we should be able to uh, uh, discover ourselves at a time like this on what our abilities are. 
and uh, the, the power of family unity and so, and so on and so on. So my question now is, in the face of so many economic challenges, bad governance in our countries, especially Africans, uh, how is how will our or to which extent can our optimism help us to survive in 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 this situation? I I, I know that from Kazakhstan, uh, Amida is uh, I don't know your economy anyway, but things are pretty good here. Let me put it that way. That even your optimism, you are demoralized by a lot of things happening around you. That is my question. Thank you very much for. Your question, um, if I correctly understood your question, so how much optimistic point of view can help person to survive in his life? Okay, am I right? Yeah, yeah, in an economic situation like we have in Africa. Ah, yes. uh, in Africa. Yeah. Uh, okay, personally, um, I know about the African economy not so much, uh, but I think that uh, your economy, you, your country is. Uh, not uh, uh, highly developed, but it is developing country as Tajikistan. Our country is also a developing country. Our economy is also uh, not highly developed, but, but in every situation in our life, uh, what helps you to survive? Of course, it is your view. It is your perception. It is your evaluation. Your evaluation of the circumstances, your, our, uh, your view to life circumstances will help you to survive. Imagine if you are a pessimistic person. What is the benefit of being a pessimistic person if you have difficulty? You will, uh, you will uh, your situation will get worse uh, your economic situation, your family situation, your, I don't know, everything will get worse if you evaluate your life circumstances from the pessimistic point of view. Yeah. Also, if you believe the God, you should always be tolerant. You should always believe that in the future, everything will be okay. You should believe it. But if you do not believe that uh, that everything will be okay and everything has goodness, you will have more problem in your life. You will have a uh, psychological problem, you will have uh, problem with your health and etc. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that uh, you should not uh, pay attention to some negative points of something. Of course, everything has, positive and negative sides. But if you want to survive, as you, you said yourself, if you want to survive, if you want to continue your movement, yeah. you should choose your life. You should look at your life from the pink glasses, that life is beautiful. Life is good. Life gives you hope. It depends on yourself. Give you power. Your power will be double. Your power will develop. And you can change your life into, into uh, the good way. This is, I think, uh, it's my opinion. Thank you. Thank All right. You. That's a very important point indeed. Uh, let's wait for uh, more questions. And if I were to summarize Amida's response uh, to uh, the other student, it is that uh, the subconscious of us has a very, very powerful way to uh, tackle any problem that the human being can experience. Uh, what this is all about is whenever you have a situation, uh, an obstacle you're trying to cross, a challenge you're trying to resolve and so forth and so on, the way that issue is affecting you, if you are optimistic in life, is not the same way that you feel the same problem if you are pessimistic which means everything is within you. 
your subconscious, pretty much the two terms that uh, Amida emphasized in her response, your perception, your view. Uh, and that perception is going to be very, very powerful in, I mean, physically, you're gonna feel it, you're gonna see it, you're gonna experience it the way you see it, the way you feel it. Uh, that is a question that I just read from one of our attendees. I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Victor. Go ahead, Victor. Uh, good afternoon, um, uh, presenter. So much. Uh, there's uh, noise at the background. Okay. Yeah, I said uh, good afternoon. We thank our presenter so much. I really enjoy the presentation. I have a contribution and then a question. Uh, the contribution as we are talking about the sustainability, I believe that uh, you know you need a Hello. source of inspiration. And um, I will uh, say that uh, if uh, from this presentation, uh, we have Hello. the faith in God. And so if, uh, for example, uh, you are using the Bible to be a guide, uh, to do whatever uh, you intend to do, it will, you can you will be able to sustain uh, all the good things that, uh, as you mentioned, they have really gained, uh, especially moving from materialistic to spirituality. And so you can, you can uh, use the Bible as a source of your inspiration to be able to continue. Then my question is, uh, she talk about um, being at the house during the pandemic, and uh, we had a, a family uh, that the closeness uh, with the family. And uh, I want her uh, to uh, tell us uh, if she could uh, make some assessment concerning the family during her uh, stay at home. What are the things that she have really uh, seen that she um, may think that an impact on the family during uh, stay uh, at home? If you can give us some of the examples probably that you have seen that has uh, taken place in the family. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Victor. I don't know, uh, Amida, just go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. But could you please, Dr. Frank Franklin, uh, ask me his question because I could not hear him very well. Could you ask me the same question again? briefly okay uh, one of the issues that's being brought up here is that uh, how can people really uh, measure their feelings to uh, face the pandemic positively how can they do that uh-huh positively <laughs> okay uh, again again it depends on their uh, temperament am i right Yes. Yeah. yes. It, again, it depends on your on your education. It depends on your uh, uh, on your level of knowledge and level of intellect. If your intellect uh, allows you, you can measure you can measure uh, uh, everything in your life, and you can control everything in your life. You can control your feelings. You can control your power of will but again if your power of will is weak if your wishes uh do not abate your intellect unfortunately you cannot you cannot control and unfortunately your life will be dark and your life will be full of difficulties your life will be uh, i don't know full of problems but it depends on how you look at your life it personally depends on you for example if it is raining outside for me for optimistic person uh rain when it rains i can say that the the the, the air is fresh and uh, after the rain uh there will be a lot of plants a lot of green plants in the yard or in the garden but for another person who possesses a uh, pessimistic point of view, he can say, oh my God, it's raining outside. It is so dirty outside. The same life circumstance, the same life event can be 
can be evaluated in different way. Yes. In different way. Yeah. And again, I want to say that a person, if he wants to achieve his goals, if he wants to realize his goals, he should be up, uh, uh, optimistic because life has a lot of difficulties. Life has a lot of um, uh, problems, misfortunes, but it doesn't mean that we should lose our hope. We should always keep our hope, but hope, only hope is not enough. You should act, of course. Hope plus your actions and your movement will be okay. I fully agree. Self-control. Self-control. Plus act. That's the way we should uh, look at uh, life during this pandemic. Uh, we have about uh, 10 minutes for more questions. I don't know if uh, any of uh, Oh, I see one, two, three, four hands up. Let's begin with uh, Abdul Kadir. Turn your mic on, Abdul Kadir, and yes, we're listening to you. Abdul Kadir? Oh, Abdul Kadir doesn't seem to get my invitation. I see, uh, okay, so Abdul Kadir has the microphone still off. Let's try Adama Toure. Your hands is up. Hello, okay, hello. Uh, wait, wait. Hello? Abdul Kadir. There, there yes, we go. Yes, Abdul Kadir, go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Mr. Breden, uh, President. I would like uh, to thank you for your, uh, and also I would like to thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Hamida, for her uh, symbolic presentation. I'm Abdul Kadir. I'm from Somalia. I am one of the students at Atlantic International University in, in the sector of public mm -hmm. health. Okay. And this uh, symbolism is very interested, and I'm very um, get uh, so. Okay, Adama, just turn your mic uh, off for now, as we are listening to Abdul Kadir. You will be next, Adama. Please, you may turn your mic off now, Adama, so that Abdul Kadir can continue yeah. with his question. Thank you, Adama. Go ahead, Abdul Kadir. Abdul Kadir, you there? Well, yeah, we are very sorry we've lost Abdul Kadir. So go ahead, Adama, since Abdul Kadir is gone. Adama, your question, Adama? No, I haven't got a question. Okay, I Adama, go you. ahead. Hello. Yes. We are listening, Adama. Okay, I just just greet you. I haven't got a question. Uh, okay, all right. Thank you, Adama. <laughs> Again, what uh, 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 Hamida Unova is trying to explain in her presentation we heading to the end of uh, that slot uh, uh, signed to uh, uh, Hamilda. Uh, the point is all we need is self-control. Uh, her last statement was that if you combine uh, hope with acting, meaning that you believe that you cannot fail no matter what the situation is and you act upon that commitment to succeed, when you mix those two things up together, there is no way you can fail. So uh, bottom line is uh, your self-conscious, if you allow your self-consciousness to guide you in this perspective, everything's gonna be fine. Uh, let's see if we have a new question. Uh, thank you, Joachim, I see your hands up. Uh, uh, Al-Haji, uh, Burema, I don't know uh, which one of you wants to ask a question. Remember, we only have five more minutes to go with uh, Hamida. Hello. I can speak. Yes. Um, yes, I would like to thank Hamida. Go My ahead, Joachim. Joachim. My name is yes. Joachim from Nigeria. OK. Um, I thank you uh, for your topic and the treatment you have given it. I think that shows a very deep level of introspection. Um, which has formed what I may call your internal movement. 
an internal movement. Now, the question I'm asking is, what are the factors you have in place to ensure that typical of every movement, it is able to galvanize the masses, it's able to mobilize the masses, it's able to put a fire in the heart of other people and to make them come on the bandwagon of your movement. Uh, your movement, to my mind, still remains an internal movement until you give it the force to become externalized. So what are you doing to ensure that it catches fire in your immediate community, it catches fire among your peers, it catches fire among your professional colleagues, it catches fire in the social world around you? Thank you. Do you get the point, Hamida? Oh, we, well, where is Hamida? Maybe lost connection again. If I understand your point, uh, uh, Joachim, uh, you refer to uh, internal, internal uh, desire or internal uh, movement, pretty much like Hamida uh, pointed it out. Uh, how can we get this internal concept to catch fire and I understand the uh, concept of catch fire like you uh, presented it like uh, to have everything materialized it's not just a matter of believing that uh, it can be done but uh, at some point in time you've got to see that desire come to fruition which means to come real where it's no longer a wish it is something that you are enjoying physically. But again, as we don't have Hamida, who eventually has lost her connection, the point is, as long as uh, you go into that movement with uh, not only a commitment, but uh, a full desire to act, everything is going to be fine. Uh, as I said again, unfortunately, we don't have Hamida to uh, present her understanding of your question and uh, her approach as to how uh, you can uh, externalize uh, pretty much the way you put it, Joachim, that uh, desire, that internal desire to see things come, you know, concretely. But uh, the way we can summarize this is simply that... Uh, you combine perception with act, then everything's going to be fine. Uh, very unfortunately, we, oh, uh, uh, Amida seems to be back. But anyway, uh, we are apparently uh, getting to the end of this presentation. Uh, uh, we cannot take any more questions. We're just going to go back now to Hamida with uh, a conclusion of her presentation. We want to thank everybody for joining us for this symposium and for uh, seeing uh, Hamida's presentation. We're gonna go very soon to the next presentation, but now let's allow Hamida uh, Urinova from Tajikistan to draw a conclusion from her presentation. Hamida. Thank you. I'm sorry for being disconnected for a while, I'm sorry. It so happens. my conclusion, uh, I want to say that opportunity, again, uh, every time you have, every time person has opportunity, no matter it is any kind of situation, any kind of circumstances, for, for a person should find an opportunity uh, to start movement because uh, if you want to move, if you want to go forward, you can. You should believe yourself, yes. you should hope, and uh, believe that you have opportunity, you have everything, because opportunity is given you from God. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again, Hamida. That was individual opportunities during the pandemic, our first conference for this AIU Symposium 2021. Uh, Runova Hamida is doing a doctorate degree in uh, the field of uh, in social science, and uh, we want to wish you the very, very best, uh, Hamida, with both your academic life, uh, your professional uh, endeavors, and also your family life as well. May God bless you, and again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.